If you believe it, it's time for you to fly. I believe. Now, don't say it yet. I have to say it for myself first. You know, I've been thinking. I became born again when I was 23. And nobody told me all these that you are being told every month. And I said, I wish somebody told me what you are hearing, but by myself, without anyone telling me, there's nobody to tell me if you can dream it, you can do it. All of a sudden, I had something in my heart. I don't know whether I dreamt it or God gave the dream. I believe God gave the dream. When God gives you a dream, you accept the dream. You believe the dream. You confess the dream. You drive the dream. You enter into that dream. You fortify yourself for the dream. You will do it. But you know, if you just say, I have a dream, <laughs> I hear you. And you don't internalize that dream. I know I am going somewhere. You must do that. And so, I entered the university the year I was born again. And I knew there must be a dream that drives me. And as I entered from the very first day, in fact, I'll tell you something. Many people do not know this about me. When I got the admission letter in June of 1964, and I'd been born again in April, what I did was I contacted somebody in a mass department, a student. I knew him because he passed out of a secondary school alma mater. I said, please give me all your notes for year one. And he gave me all his mass notes for year one. Between that June, I got the admission, and the September, I entered the university as a student. I had gone through all his notes. I had read everything, I had studied everything, and I copied quite a lot of things there. And then we entered in September. When the lecturer came, what he was talking about, I studied it already between June and September because I had a dream. And that dream. I'm telling you like father, you'll be like me. Yeah. That dream make me focused. And the first class that I had, 1967, was like, what else could I have? What else will you have? You will fly. And this is the time, your own time. I said your own time. Where is the person I'm talking to there? Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray that the seed you will plant in the heart and make us fly beyond what we ever thought about, what our parents ever thought about, what anyone ever thought about, plant it in every heart right now in Jesus' name. A dream, 
a vision, a goal, an ideal, a destination plant in every heart now in Jesus' name. Those who are here at the Alpha location and those who are there online, everywhere, connected now, Lord, I pray you will lead everyone to the next level. And Lord, in our lifetime, I'll see your children where they are flying to. Confirm it, Lord, in every heart. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I say that amen for myself. The Lord confirm it in your life in Jesus' name. God bless you. You can sit down. Today as we are talking about reigning. Reigning with Christ. I bring this message to you. The royal road to salvation and success through Christ. The royal road. There's a road. Highway that God himself constructs. And he takes us on that royal road to salvation, to success, to significance. You'll be significant in life in Jesus' name. In Isaiah chapter 48, reading from verse 17, thus says the Lord, thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, I am the Lord thy God, which teaches thee to profit. The God that teaches you to profit. The God that holds your hand and takes you up the stairs and you climb the ladder and he teaches you to profit. And he teaches you to prosper. And he teaches you to progress. It is of the Lord that the Lord himself he has created us. And he created us for something high. For something great. For something up there. Not down there. And he says he, our creator. He, our redeemer. He, our savior. He, our Lord. He teaches us. He instructs us. He leads us. One, to profit. Two, to prosper. And then three, to progress. And it says, Which leadeth thee by the way, by the road, by the path, by the express way that you will go, that thou shouldest go. And if we follow the Lord, there's no way we can fail. He knows what he created us for. He knew the dream he put in our heart. And he knew the destination where we ought to reach. And he says, I teach, I lead in the way that you should go. Look at verse 18. In verse 18, oh, that my people, that thou art hacking Unto my commandments. I think the challenge everyone knows is that if we do not follow the guide, if we not, do not follow our God, if we do not follow the one who says, he teaches, he leads, and it is when we follow that guidance that we will have the profit, will have the progress, and we're walking in that path that he leads. But he said, oh, that thou art hearken, listen to my commandments. Then at thy peace being as a river, and thy righteousness are the waves of the sea. It tells us in Jeremiah chapter 6 and verse 16. Jeremiah chapter 6 verse 16. Thus says the Lord, thus says the Lord. Now, when you read your Bible, 
Many people say many things. And you must realize what God has said. If you don't realize that, you will take everything that is said as if they are all the same, all equal. But you must know, thus says the Lord. Somebody rose up and said, let us build a tower that reaches to heaven. That's a kind of dream. But God did not say that. that therefore, he scattered them. You must know what God is saying. Absalom drank and he said, I will topple David, my father. God has not said that. And you know, all those people that followed him, they're going to topple David. We have this dream. And we're going to take the place of David. Now, God has not said that. Lucifer in heaven. He was there and he said, I will lift up my star and my seat above the seat of God. Now, God has not said that. He had a dream that he was going to replace God. Know what God has said. But Joseph, Joseph had a dream that came from God. Know what God has said. Jeremiah, don't say I'm a child. You will go to all the people I sent you to and you will say whatsoever I put in your mouth, God said. And then we have the Caleb that God said, this is what you'll do. I'll give you the place, that mountain, know what God has said. And then, then the problem with some people is they do not know the dream that comes from God. And like Absalom, like Lucifer, they say, this is where I'm going. Let God teach. Let God lead. Let him show the way that you must go. Now, thus says the Lord, stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the old paths. Where is the good way? Uh, when you have the destination, when you have the place you are going, you must stand and say and ask, where is the good way? And walk Therein, if you just keep standing there, if you just keep on looking there without walking, without doing, without acting, faith without action is dead. It says, and walk therein, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. Amen. Give a good alpha location, amen. <laughs> whatever I'm doing, whatever you are doing, and there's no rest in our soul. Check it up again. No peace in your soul. Check it up again. And this torment, your turn here and there, while you are doing that thing, there's doubt, there's confusion, there's conflict, and there is palpitation of the heart. That thing you are doing, check it up. When it is the dream from God, when it is the plan from God, and you stand in the ways and you watch, and then you listen to the directives of the Lord, and it leads you that this is the way to go, and you walk in it, you'll find rest, peace, tranquility in your heart, in your soul, in Jesus' name. Once again, we're looking at the royal road to salvation, to success through Christ. There are three things we're looking at. Number one, the ruinous road while running without salvation in Christ. There are people that run, I need to run. Now. Others are running, I'm running. Others are moving, I need to move. Others are engaged, I need to engage. Make sure you have salvation in Christ. Salvation through Christ. Salvation by Christ. Have a definite understanding 
a definite kind of assurance you have that salvation if the salvation is not there and you are running without salvation in Christ it's a ruinous road number one the ruinous road while running without salvation in Christ number two the ruling response what does that mean it will always respond to stimulus we respond to a prompting. We respond to a voice. We respond to an action. We respond to whatever it is that touches our heart. Whatever it is that gives us a stirring in our soul. Let that response be a good response. And let it be the response that rules your life. A response that rules your action. A response that rules everything you do. Number two is the ruling response of rising to success through Christ. Number three is the reestablished reign. The re-established reign of the righteous through steadfastness in Christ. Steadfastness in Christ. And not people that start and they have a lot of unfinished projects. They have a lot of unfinished proposals. They have a lot of unfinished things they started and they are not steadfast. They are not disciplined. They are not diligent. They do not pursue whatever they have started to what we call a logical conclusion. They do not pursue until they get to that definite decision and definite goal that the Lord had called them to do. What you start, you will finish. It takes being established, it takes being disciplined, it takes being diligent, it means being determined that whatever comes, rain or sunshine, whatever comes, friends or foes, whatever comes, pleasure or pain, whatever comes, retardation or acceleration whatever it is this that I know is a dream that Lord had planted in my heart you are so disciplined and diligent and you continue you have then rain you rain that's how we rain the people who are lazy the people who are undecided the people who are kind of moved here and there they never rain circumstances rain over them and the vicissitudes of life different conditions of life rain over them you know why because they didn't search their gaze their sight their eyes on that final point on that final destination and because of that they are up and down they are here and there they are to and fro like Lucifer like the devil and they achieve nothing I will achieve you will achieve in Jesus name number three then is the re-established reign of the righteous through steadfastness in Christ, we're looking at number one. Number one, we're looking at the ruinous road while running without salvation in Christ. Who are the people that run without salvation? Number one, the corrupted people. There's corruption, and we know that. The corruptions are there at school. The corruption is there in the college. The corruption is there almost anywhere you find yourself 
in the world. And because there are people who do not have salvation in Christ, what controls them is the corruption of the deed. Number two is carnality. carnality. And the word of God says, the carnal man, the carnal boy, the carnal lady, the carnal girl, the carnal individual cannot please God. And when God is displeased with our lives, he says, his canal, he wants to go his own way, let him. And when we go our own way and he lets us like that, that canality will ruin our progress. Number one is corruption. Number two is canality. Number three is compromise. You know, there are people, they, they cannot stand on their two feet. I am going to do this. And then something comes and then they waver, they wobble and they are not able to get to where they ought to get to. They compromise in life. They agree with almost anybody and everybody around them. And I tell you, if you're a compromiser, if you cannot stand on your two feet, you don't have a mind of your own, you don't have a goal of your own, and you don't say, here I stand, and I'm going to keep on standing, God helping me without that commitment. There is compromise in your life. There is also the careless, carefree life. Careless, carefree life. Uh, you know, the people, <laughs> it's like, uh, they, don't, uh, they don't really aim at anything. And they don't really want to get anywhere. That carelessness, careless life. And a carefree life. All that will make us not to be who we ought to be. All those things that plague, that pressurize the lives of people. Not having salvation through Christ. They'll be taking off your life today in Jesus' name. Look at Ezekiel chapter 18. And I'm reading from verse 30. Ezekiel chapter 18. Reading from verse 30. Therefore I will judge you. O house of Israel. Everyone according to his way. Says the Lord. It says repent and turn yourselves from all your transgressions. So iniquity shall not be be your ruin. Iniquity ruins lives. Iniquity, sin, ruins life. Transgression ruins life. Evil doing ruins life. Corruption ruins our lives. Ruins our lives. You're trying to get a shortcut to get to that place, and that shortcut is corruption. And it ruins our lives. You're trying to get a certificate and there is the carnality and there is the giving of yourself to the lecturer so that you will have this carnality ruins life. Compromise ruins life. When you are born again, Christ lives in your heart and Christ directs you and Christ teaches you and leads you where you should go and then the other classmates or the other seniors or other people, they come and they say, why don't we do it this way? You know it is wrong. And yet, you compromise. That ruins lives. And you cannot be and you cannot get to where you ought to go. A careless life. The one that said, tomorrow I'm going to do this. Tomorrow comes and then he's just careless about his decisions. He's careless about his goal. He's careless about all the things that he had said he will do. The carefree life. Free life is available for everybody. A talker comes and you want to do an assignment. The talker comes and then you continue the talking. And then you forget your assignment. And another person comes. He wants to sell something to you. And what he's selling is something of the world. 
And that will not get you to where you ought to be. And the Lord is saying, repent all this life of corruption. All the lives of evil that many people trade on. And they cannot get to where they are going. Today is the day of separation from them. Today is the day of total turning unto the Lord. Understand, understand. Adam and Eve were created to reign. What did in their reign? They were to subdue. They were to have dominion over everything on land, on sea, even on the air. Why did each elude them, escape them? Because of their compromise. The devil came and said, as God said, and he got into conversation. Why should you get into conversation with somebody who wants to dribble you, who wants to destroy you, who wants to derail you? Because of the careless life and because of the carefree life, that's why they couldn't reign. And Solomon was coronated to rule and to reign. It should have been higher and greater than every king in every respect. But he too is the corruption, is the carnality, is the compromise, is the carelessness, is the carefree life that made him not to be able to have what the Lord had ordained for him. And God commissioned something that he will reign. No power should have been able to destroy him, to derail him, or to turn him in any direction that was not the will of God. Adam and Eve created, Solomon coronated, and Samson commissioned. That they will reign, they will have dominion, but they did not have, they did not do all that God had ordained for them because of those things that came into their lives. Now we are here and we know it's time for us to rise up, it's time for us to go up. And it's time for you to fly. Yeah. And you're asking yourself, in your community, in your college, in your school, in your environment, what are the things that come to derail you, to distract you, to destroy you, and to make you miss this great creative, redemptive opportunity that the corruption will come, you will say no. And the carnality will come. Come, have carnal knowledge of this. You will say no. And the compromise, the compromising situation will come. In our lives, it comes to everyone because the devil from behind engineers them. That this is what they should do to us. You will say no. And the thought of being careless, carefree, just, just to be at ease, available for play, when you should be studying, when you should be drilling yourself and putting yourself under the master that lives in your heart and you sit down there and you do the work that needs to be done. At that time, carelessness will not bring you down. Being carefree will not bring you down. We will soar. You will soar in Jesus' name. It says, turn yourselves 
from all your transgressions so iniquity shall not be your ruin iniquity ruins anyone that gives chance to that iniquity to take over their lives to run their lives to rule their lives and to destroy their lives we're looking at um, luke chapter 6 verse 49 in luke chapter 6 verse 49 but he that heareth and doeth not is like a man that without a foundation built an house upon the earth many people in life they build a career without a foundation. They build their educational pursuit without a foundation. Number one, what does that mean? It means there are people that buy certificates. And so that certificate they buy or they get the certificate through explode. They do not really have the foundational knowledge, the fundamental knowledge, the knowledge they ought to have to have that certificate. But now they carry a certificate, but they do not have any foundation in their education. And when they go to a higher institution with that certificate, without any foundation, without real study, they cannot cope. And eventually, that educational pursuit comes to ruin. That's what we're saying. If we allow corruption to come in, if we allow the carnality to come in, if we allow the compromise to come in, if we allow the carelessness and the carefree attitude, everybody is doing it and so I do it too. Everybody is building a house with a foundation, so I do it too. Everybody is building a career without foundation, so I do it too. Everybody is building a company without foundation, so I do it too. All those houses without foundation, they will crumble. That's what Christ said. He that heareth and doeth not is like a man that without a foundation built a house upon the earth against which the stream did beat vehemently and immediately it fell and the ruin of that house was great. I pray your house will not collapse and your career will not collapse and then your running will not be impeded and will not be stopped by anything in Jesus name. It takes repentance that I know that that is, uh, uh, that is a ruinous road and I repent from that. Now, it, it goes beyond even repentance. It takes restitution. Restitution. You've got a certificate without foundation. What are you going to do? Restitution. You've got an admission without foundation. And you know, it's another person that wants to take that exam rather than yourself and you won't go your way through and then you have admission but you don't have the knowledge you don't have the foundation and if the foundation be destroyed what shall the righteous do there's repentance there is restitution and then there is also what we call a rectifying the past is remedial training. I don't have this foundation. I don't have uh, this or that. And yet I want to fly. And I believe you will fly. Yeah. But this remedial training. 
There's remedial teaching. There is remedial instruction that all the things you lost in the past and you didn't really have the foundation. You go back to that foundational sin and you train yourself again. First, there's repentance. Second, there is restitution that you make right what you are done wrong. And then you rectify. You have all these remedial studies that will now put you squarely on the path of success and you will succeed in Jesus' name. And we're looking at Hebrews chapter 12 and we're reading from verse 1. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 1. Wherefore seen. We also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. What does that mean? All the people we have in the previous chapter, in chapter 11, they are a cloud of witnesses. And it says that we are compassed about with them. Look at Enoch. He walked with God not minding what others were doing or what they were not doing. Look at Abel, he sacrificed unto God, an acceptable sacrifice, even though he knew that his own senior brother, the same father, the same mother, he was not uh, walking the way of the Lord. All the same, he will not allow the corruption from Cain to hinder him from doing what you ought to do. We learn about Noah and Noah built the ark. They were jesting. He kept on building. They were doubting. He kept on building. They were asking foolish questions. He kept on building. They were reacting to his foolish, uh, this foolish uh, ark. He kept on building. You see the people all that we have learned about in uh, Hebrews chapter 11, they were the people that went on and went on consistently and they went on confidently and they went on courageously, not minding what others were doing and what others were not doing. We're foreseen that we also are compassed about was so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight. Let us lay aside every weight. Let us lay aside. You're running and you have weight like a bag of cement behind your back. How are you going to make it with well, that load and that weight? Lay it aside. You have, you're running, and there's a, there's a very heavy thing on your heart, on your soul. How are you going to even breathe? How are you going to run? There is, lay aside every weight, every weight of corruption, every weight of carnality, and every weight of compromise, and every weight of carelessness. Lay them aside. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us. And the sin which does so easily beset us. You are thinking of repentance. I'm going to repent. I'm going to live a better life. I'm going to depend on the Lord. And lo and behold, as we are thinking that, that irresistible sin partner shows up. And you see him, or you see her, what are you going to do now? Are you going to continue your prayer, your decision? I'm laying aside this corruption, this sin, this evil, while that person shows up, the sin will do so easily beset you. The one that easily changes your mind and tells you, I'm here, round up your prayer. Or maybe you want to have a project. You see, all the projects I've been having with that man, that's an unequal yoke together with the unbeliever. And now I'm going to set things right. I will rectify everything that is wrong. And while you are making that decision, look, it shows up. 
the business partner and he shows up with his pipe and he shows up with his carefree, careless attitude and he say, hey, I came so we can sign the, fi the final paper. What are you going to do now? Because you see that man, that woman, that idea, that ideology appears irresistible. And yet, if you are going to make progress, you must lay aside every weight. And that sin which so easily beset you, and let us run with perseverance. The word patience there means perseverance. The race that is set before us. We will do it. I said, we will do it. The things I had to lay aside. Now, I just talk about them. I don't feel their pressure anymore. I don't feel all the things that will tie me down. I don't feel them anymore. That time, when I was about to get up, about to run, about to fly, not flee, but fly, and go up and soar. Those things were there. You see, I had, when I was, you know, much younger, yes, I knew that mathematics inside, outside, in depth, in every detail. And, you know, the friends I had, I remember one of my friends, he had tried and tried the GCOE old level many, many years. He didn't make it. And he came to me and he said, my friend, <laughs> you know, I want to be able to carry a certificate. And yet I cannot. What, are you, can you help me? And I never knew how to say no to anybody. I always said yes. Yes. Can you say no? no. You didn't say it well? No. But I didn't know that I wasn't born again at that time. And I said, all right, I'll do it for you. And I got his number and I went to do it for him. Of course, when the result came, he cleared the paper. I wasn't born again. Another friend came and said, I've been battling with this. Can you help me? I, I didn't know how to say no to anyone and to any proposal. And so I said yes, and I went to do it for him. Then 1964 came. April the 5th and I repented of my sin and I gave my life to the Lord Jesus Christ and the joy of salvation filled my soul April and then June admission letter came to the University of Ibada to read the mathematics and then a little bit after that when I entered I remembered the way of corruption. I remembered the way of carnality. I remembered the way of compromise. And uh, so I said, what will I do? And the voice of the Lord said, restitution. I said, I'll do it. I was in my first year. I didn't know what would happen. I didn't know what the consequence would be. And so I took my pen and I wrote to Waek. And I told Waek, this is what I had done. In my days of compromise, in my days of carnality, in my days of corruption, in my days of not knowing how to say no, in my days of compromise and carelessness. And I wrote the letter to them and I had to write to my friends too. You know, if you are doing restitution, it should be very clear. I wrote to the first one. I wrote to the second one. I said, this is what I have written to Waek. They may contact you. They may want to get this certificate away from you, but this is what I have done. You see, at that 
time all those people that led me into corruption I had to also separate from them in fact they separated from me before I separated from them and I got a letter from Waek and Waek said young man you're on the right path you're doing the right thing they didn't, uh, you know, my own certificate, I didn't uh, forge that. My own certificate was real. What was not real is what the other people had. And they encouraged me to continue in the faith and to be established and to be steadfast in what I was doing. You see, when a man's ways please the Lord, he will make even his enemies to be at peace with him. You will have peace. Yeah. You'll have progress. Yeah. There's repentance. There's restitution. There's righteousness. And as you give yourself to the Lord, and you say, Lord, thine I am. I belong to you and I'm going to abide in the faith for the rest of my life. That seals your repentance with righteousness. I come to point number two here. Point number two, I come to the ruling response for rising to success through Christ. Rising to success through Christ. We're looking at Ephesians chapter 5. <clears throat> Ephesians chapter 5. I'm reading from verse 14. He says, wherefore, he says, not the preacher, he says, it's not, uh, you know, our friends, he says, he, the one that is higher than the highest, he says, our creator, redeemer, he says, the power that helps us, the power that wakes us up and leads us on, wherefore, he says, awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. When the light of the gospel comes to you, and you accept that, and you believe that, and you embrace that, and you say, this light of the gospel that comes to me, I will live by it. I will walk by it. I will move by it. I will do all things by it. That's when the light of godliness will shine in your life. That's the, when the light of glory will shine in your heart. The light of the gospel. It says Christ shall give thee light. But you must arise. And you must brush all the sluggishness and the slumbering of the sleep away from you. And you arise from those who are dead. They are dead in sins and trespasses. They are dead in evil and corruption. They are dead in the ways of the world. And the ways of the world are dreading, deadened their heart, deadened their mind, and deadened all their conscience. But you get away from them. And you arise from the dead and Christ gives you light. Look at verse 15. In verse 15 it says, See then that ye walk circumspectly. After we are saved, we we'll walk properly. We we'll walk rightly. We we'll walk righteously. And we do not go back to those things we are doing before. And the Lord will see that truly we have reason from those dead practices. It says we then walk circumspectly, not as fools. Not as fools. How do fools walk? Fools walk in the wrong on the wrong road that will not lead them 
to their destination. Those are fools. Fools walk, they see the destination and they see the road, but they say, no, I'm not going to take that road. The road that leads to victory. The road that leads to success. The road that leads to significance in life is the road of righteousness. The road of purity. The road of holiness. We don't walk now as fools, but as wise. As wise. Already the bridge is there. The bridge is constructed. <laughs> no need to construct another bridge. A wise man will say, Others have gone on that bridge and they have got to their destination. And I can go on that bridge too. Others have taken that road and they have got into victory, the way of righteousness. People have walked there and they got to their destination. Think about all these a cloud of witnesses that have gone on and on. Abraham and Sarah and Isaac and Jacob and Joseph and all those worthies of old, they walked there and they walked circumspectly, not with corruption, not with carnality, not with carelessness, not with compromise. Look at Daniel. Daniel of the Bible days, he walked without all those sins. And he walked circumspectly. And if we follow the same path, we'll get to where they got to. Yeah. I will get there. Higher, I will get there. Higher, I will get there. Higher, Greater, I will get there. Yeah. Brighter life ahead, I will get there in Jesus' name. Yeah. It says, not as fools, but as wise. In verse 16, verse 16, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Redeeming the time. What I need to do today, I don't procrastinate until tomorrow. Where I need to reach today, I do not delay until tomorrow. And what I need to do today, while the iron is hot, and I want to beat out, and I want to craft out, and I want to create that instrument, that weapon, while the iron is hot, that's when I beat it to shame, redeeming the time. If I talk away the proper time, the good time, the necessary time, when my brain is still alive and active, if I talk away that time, and then later now, I want you, you know, I come back to it. I have not read the time. Uh, do you understand how the brain works in your teenage years? Those cells are well connected together. And the, you know, ability to remember the part of the brain that reads this and remember, and the frontal lobe that uh, reads that, and immediately it sticks there. And then to the twenties, when you're in your twenties, and to a little bit of that is when you become forty. That's why those other people say a fool at forty is a fool forever. But that will not be true of you. But redeeming the time, the things I can study now, and the things I can go through now, you know, studying a new language, studying a new art, and studying you know, anything at the time when the brain is hungry for knowledge. And he's saying, Give it to me, I can retain that. That's the time to discipline yourself and get your aid and get it done. But if you waste all those years when you can learn, all those years when you can have a kind of pursuit and goal getting, you waste all that time and now in your 50s, you want to now get back to it. You need to redeem the time. And the brain has now settled the connections of the cells and the neutrons. 
They're not like they were at that time. And now you see that your attention span to take in a new thing. Everything is declining at the right time. While the iron is hot, that's when to get that thing done. I look at David. And as David was still a young man. And he confronted Goliath. And Saul said, you cannot do it. You're a young man. That man has been a warrior from his youth. He said, I can. Somebody there said, I can. And Saul said, okay, if you're going to do it, because you insist, have my weapon. He tried it. And David said, I've not tried this before. But the one, what I've tried before, my sling and the stone, this would get the man. And he ran like a young man. And then he looked at Goliath and he said, something that never entered your head is coming. And he threw that thing and it entered the head. And Goliath him down. Your Goliath will come down. I'm talking to you on redeeming the time. Years later, the relatives of that Goliath giant, Israel confronted them and David went forth with them. And one of those descendants of Goliath took the sword, it would have killed him, except that somebody came and pushed him away and killed that other one. You see, in his older days, he couldn't do what he used to do. If you're going to do it, if you're going to pursue that career, if you're going to pursue that discipline, this is the time redeeming the time because the days are evil. I'm talking to an achiever there. Yeah. After today, or even today when we're finished, go sit down somewhere. What are the things I intended to pursue that I've not been pursuing? What are the things I started and I have not finished and I quit, pick them up again while the message is fresh, while the fire is burning, while the determination is restored and you say, here am I, I'm going to get it done, redeeming the time. Amen? Amen. Of the 24 hours of each day, how do you spend the 24 hours? Any time for study? Any time for strategy? Any time for goal getting? Any time you have that remedial thing I ought to do? I'm doing it now. Any time? Of the 168 hours of the week, how much time do you devote to a good career and to a good destiny, a good destination? I'm going to do that thing. How much of the hours do you devote? If you need to study something new, if you could have just one hour devoted to that thing, Every day, every day, every day. There are 265 days of the year. And let's say you even take up the 65 for the Sundays and for the holidays. It remains 300. If you concentrated on one thing, this one thing I do. One hour for 300 days. 300 hours. You'll master any subject. You'll master 
any cause, I will master it. That sin will not master me. But that means that you push aside every sin that wastes your time and you give yourself to this particular study. And you can see this one sin I do, you will succeed. Yeah. Isaiah chapter 52. And I'm reading from verse 1. Isaiah chapter 52 verse 1. Awake! Awake! There's nothing I can do until I wake up. Until my conscience wakes up. Until my mind wakes up. Until my brain wakes up. Until the inner man in me wakes up. You see, there are people, yes, I know they're walking about, but they don't wake up to reality. They don't wake up to their future. They don't wake up to anything. Although they go to school, they just at school, they don't wake up to why am I here? And the first thing we do is to recollect ourselves, to regather ourselves, to brace up ourselves Awake, awake, put on thy strength, put on thy strength. Many of us are guilty of not putting on our thinking cap. Many of us are guilty of not putting on the strength of our lives. I look at my life, you look at your life, where am I today and where I am today was the strength that got me there. Was the attitude that got me there. Was the power that got me there. Was the devotion that got me there. There I was in the past. There I was in 1958. And I knew next to nothing. I didn't even know why I was in the secondary school. But something happened that woke me up. The brain had been sleeping and slumbering. Then a teacher came and what he did woke me up. And now I realized I have strength that I need to put on. And I put on the strength. And I challenge you today. Look at your life. Look at your past. Look at your actions. Look at your achievement. Look at where you are now. And wake up. You will wake up. Yeah. And you will put on your strength. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I was born again. I'm talking of another time now. And I'm I read the scriptures, I did. And I read over and over and over. But there is something I never did. I never could preach outside my comfort zone. I had some students in the scripture union. I could talk to them. They were my students. Outside that comfort zone, I couldn't talk to anybody about Christ. I couldn't preach. I knew I had the knowledge. I couldn't express it. And then one day, one Christian leader was having a program, a conference. And he called me. And the way he told me to prepare a message, I couldn't say no, even though I was timid and afraid. And so I prepared, other people prepared, they did their own part. When it came to my part, I just forgot that I was a fearful person, a timid person. I forgot that I used to fear the crowd. That day, I just forgot. You'll forget the negative. 
and the positive will take place in your heart in Jesus name and then I thought and I still remember the man whom God uses. That was the topic he gave me. The man whom God uses. And I delivered each of them. I wasn't even thinking of anything. And then after that message, he called me aside. He said, God has raised you up a teacher of the world. Amen. That's what awakened me. Awake. Something happens in your life. An event. An occasion. And that thing wakes you up. And then the strength you have, it was from that time. I now knew the strength and the ability in the teaching ministry. And I now developed it. I read, I studied, I practiced, I acted. Here we are today. What God has done for me, he will do for you. Somebody there. I said somebody there. This is the day you will wake up in Jesus' name. And you put on your strength, O Zion. Put on that beautiful garment, O Jerusalem, the holy city. For henceforth there shall no more come into thee the uncircumcised and the unclean. Look at verse 2. In verse 2 it says, Shake thyself from the dust. While we were lazy, and while we were lying down, no purpose, no goal, no desire, no progress, all the dust had been gathering on us. Have you noticed when you put a chair somewhere, any instrument somewhere, and you leave it there, and nobody touches it, and nobody comes to spoil it, dust, dust, dust will gather. And that's what it does to the human being. Dust gathers in the brain, in the mind, in the spirit. When that is just lying, follow there, dust will gather on it, but my day has come. You will arise from the dust. You will lose yourself from the bands of your neck. You know, can somebody, you know, just there, and then people come, and you say, come there, and they put bands on your neck by the words they speak. They put limitation in your life by the words they speak. And they put yoke on your neck by the actions they manifest. And they clamp you down. And you're just there. You're just, you're just a nice, good fellow. You never ask anybody, what are you doing to me? Why are you putting that yoke on my neck? Why are you putting that restriction in my life? You're just a nice, good fellow. And you allow them to put the bands in your neck. And to put the yoke in your neck. And to put the limitation in your life. And then, at the time you want to rise up, you see that something is pinning you down. Something is holding you down. I say today, enough is enough. We're going to break every band anyone put on you in Jesus' name. You will not be nice to the devil. I said you will not be nice to the devil. As a preacher, and he normally is a charismatic preacher, but he had a family, and he had some of these young, young children. And the young children did not answer. They didn't know who Lucifer was. They didn't know who Satan was. They didn't know who the devil was. But the charismatic preacher. And the, the children will follow him uh, to church. And this charismatic preacher, after preaching, he'll say, Satan, I cast you out. 
devil, I cast you out. And one of the little children came and said, Daddy, why don't we be nice to him? He will not feel good the way you are talking about him and you are casting him out. Why can't we be gentle to him? <laughs> That's how some people do. They are gentle to the devil. Enough is enough. They are gentle to those evil spirits that will calm them down and say, don't worry yourself. If you don't do it, others will do it. Enough is enough. You are getting out from under that yoke today in Jesus' name. Loose thyself from the bands of thy neck, O captive daughter of Zion. You will not be captive anymore. You will not be a slave anymore in Jesus' name. Psalm 1, I'm reading from verse 1. Psalm 1, verse 1. Blessed is the man. Who is that man? Blessed is the woman. Who is that woman? It's me here. Look up at me. It's me. It's me. You know, all these promises that are there in the Bible, they are there for me. The goodness of God there in the Bible is there for me. The power and the strength and the flying ability over there in the Bible is there for me. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. I'm that man. No standeth in the way of sinners. I am that man. No seatest. In the siege of the scornful, I am that man. Look at number two there, verse two there. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law does he meditate day and night. You meditate on the promises of God, on the precepts of God, on what the Lord himself as ordained for you in the word. Look at the result in verse 3. In verse 3 it says, And it shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. And it says, And that bringeth forth its fruit in a season. I'll bring forth fruit. Season, the season of the teenager. There's a kind of fruit you ought to bring forth in the season of the teenager. You bring that forth fruit. There's the kind of fruit you ought to bring forth in the time in the college days. College days. And if you're in college, the appropriate fruit you bring forth in Jesus' name. As a youth couple, after college days, there's a kind of fruit you ought to bring forth. And it is not the fruit of the primary school. It's not the fruit of the junior school. It's the appropriate fruit for this season. You bring it out in Jesus' name. And, and, and when you start walking, when you start walking, and then you are just new there as a young professional, there's a kind of fruit you ought to bring forth your fruit will come forth in Jesus' name. Look at your life. As I look at my life, my secondary school days, what kind of fruit did I bring forth that is still there in the record of the school? And when I got to college, university, there's a kind of fruit I brought forth which is still there. And when I got, when I started working, what kind of fruit did I bear? And the record is still there. And then today, at this time, what kind of fruit am I bringing forth? And the record is still there. Look at every area of your life, every part of your life, and every season of your life. Will you allow any season to be empty, to be vacant, to be fruitless? The answer is no. You will bring forth fruit in your season. 
is leave also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Whatsoever I do, whatsoever I do shall prosper. Amen. Remember, it's whatsoever I do. What if I do nothing? What if I plant zero? What if I add zero? What if I contribute zero? What if I learn zero? Well, zero multiplied by 40, tell me. Zero multiplied by 47. And zero multiplied by 82. What we do is what will prosper. If we do zero, we don't become heroes by doing zero, by doing nothing. We don't become high, great by doing nothing. From today, you will do something. Something good. Amen. Something great. Amen. Something mighty. Amen. And whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Amen. That's what I go by. And I make sure that no day is empty. No day is given to laziness and no day is given to unproductivity something in line with your calling something in line with your career something in line with God with what God has made you to become something must be done that God will multiply every day in our lives in Jesus name I come to point number three now number three we're looking at the reestablished reign of righteousness through steadfastness in Christ. The reign of the righteous. The reign of the righteous. Those are the people that reign. The righteous. The righteous they don't really reign. The adamant sinners they don't really reign. There's a lot of emptiness in the life in the profession, in the calling of the people who are adamantly righteous. In the sight of the Lord, they bear no fruit. They achieve nothing but those who are righteous and they are steadfast in Christ. And they continue in Christ. Those are the people that reign. Sin will not reign over them. And sin will not reign over you. Yeah. Satan will not reign over them. Yeah. And Satan will not reign over you. Yeah. Sickness will not reign over them. Yeah. And sickness will not reign over you. Yeah. Self will not reign over them. And self will not reign over you. Substance. Substance. Help me shout substance. substance. When I say substance, you know, you go to the bush, you pluck out a kind of liver, they call it marijuana. And then your grand age, you wrap it up, you put it in your mouth, and that thing rains over your brain, over your mind, over your soul, over your life, substance. But the people who are going to rise, where are they? The people who are going to be goal getters, where are they? Substance will not reign over you. That thing in the bottle, whatever they call it, pan wine, alcohol, whatever, that turns the brain, 
that changes life, destroys the brain, and destroys the mind. Actually, scientists now tell us that the cigarette and the alcohol, they also produce cancer effect in the bodies of people. Takes away their health takes away their life, cut short their life, substance, that thing will not reign over you. Yeah. If you have not started, the best thing is never to start. If you have started, the Lord will deliver you today. Yeah. And after that deliverance will not go back to that substance anymore in Jesus' name. Yeah. Slavery will not come over in your life. Yeah. Slavery to sensuality yeah. will not take over your life. Yeah. And serpents and scorpions will not walk over you. Yeah. Will not hurt you. Yeah. Will not destroy your life. Yeah. Christ will take hold of your life. Yeah. The serpent and the scorpion say, leave me alone. Leave me alone. This morning, we'll cast them out. They will not have any power over your life anymore in Jesus' name. You will be steadfast in the Lord. And everything you have heard today from all the speakers and from all the young people that demonstrated what you dream. If you can dream it, you can do it. And something rose up in your heart and you say, give me chance. I'm rising up. I am going forth. It will be done. Yeah. You will not live in mediocrity. Yeah. You will not be meandering about not knowing what you are doing. You will rise. You will soar. You will achieve. From today, life will have meaning for you in Jesus' name. Hebrews chapter 3, I'm looking at verse 14. For we are made partakers of Christ. If we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. If we hold what we've got now, everything we've got now, you listen again and listen again, and you hold unto that, nothing will stop your onward journey in Jesus' name. All the sin, we throw them away. All the sicknesses today, you will leave them here today in Jesus' name. Satan will come under your feet. Look at Romans chapter 16, 16, 16. Romans chapter 16, I'm reading from verse 19. In Romans chapter 16, I'm looking at verse 19. For your obedience has come abroad unto all men. The decision you are making today will go abroad. It will get to the sky. It will get to the throne of God. I am glad, therefore, on your behalf, but yet I would have you wise unto that which is good and simple, ignorant concerning evil. Now, verse 20, verse 20, and the God of peace shall bruise Satan, and the God of power shall bruise Satan, and the God of all might, which shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Grace for salvation be with you. Grace for success be with you. And grace for steadfastness be with you. 
and grace to overcome every time, every day, in every scene, everywhere. As you are going out, grace is following you. It's abiding with you. No impossibility in your life. Victory. Triumph. Power. Achievement. The goal of goodness, the goal of God fulfilled in your life in Jesus' name. Heaven has heard your aim. Nothing will stop you. Nothing will hold you down. Somebody put it on his phone. And he was, uh, you know, going uh, with me somewhere. And his phone rang. And the ringing tone says, as I succeed, you will succeed. I looked at his face. And he looked at me with affirmation. He said, every time somebody rings me, I put your voice there. And I'm following after you. And as I succeed, you will succeed. Let, let me see your face. Let me see your face. Stand up. Stand up. And those outside, God bless you. Stand up to you. Success has come to you. Achievement has come to you. <clears throat> All those online, this is a new day. We forget the past. A new thing is starting today. Close your eyes, open your mouth, and allow that thing to begin right now. That new thing to begin right now. That new thing to begin right now. You will not live in mediocrity. Failure is of the past. Being trampled upon is of the past. Defeat is of the past. No matter how successful you have been, greater success is coming your way.
In Jesus' name we pray. Heads bowed and eyes closed. There are things we need to lay aside so that nothing will impede our journey to success and significance. Heads bowed, eyes closed during the message. You discovered what sin, besetting sin, that had been plaguing your life, putting pressure on you, setting your back. Forget about everybody around. You want the real salvation of the Lord, the forgiveness of the Lord, and the breaking of the yoke of every form of sin in your life, wherever you are, as bowed eyes closed, raise up your hand and pray in a special prayer for you. Outside, do that. Inside, do that. At the galleries, do that. Forgiveness is coming your way. Freedom is coming your way. Heaven's salvation is coming your way. This load at your back, on your conscience, like a bag of cement. And you cannot run well with that load on your mind, on your conscience. We are dropping that load here today. Raise up that hand for the prayer. Are you there? I said, are you there? Raise up that Father, in the wonderful name of Jesus, we come because of your love for everyone. We're asking, Lord, all these sins that have been confessed, repented of, and we're leaving all those sins behind. Lord, forgive your children in Jesus' name. Break the power of that sin. Take the pleasure of that sin away from their mind in Jesus' name. Wash up. Cleanse up. The pollution and defilement of that sin from their conscience in Jesus' name. Amen. Set them free. Amen. Over there, set him free. Amen. Over there, set her free. Amen. Outside there, set him free. Amen. Online, set her free. Amen. And release them to now go in the way profitable, in the way progressive, in the way professional. Goodness in your life. The smile of God upon your life. Time for you now. You will fly and soar. Lord, let the weakness be in every heart in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, you know, there are times when somebody is walking in the way and then something stands in the way. And is this where you're going? I just had a message. That says, I awake from the dust, I put on strength, and I'm going to succeed. He said, Well, on my dead body. I said, What do you mean? He says, I am sickness. And I'm standing here, I was waiting for you. And sickness, me, sickness will not allow you to get to where you're going. I say you are a liar like your master, the devil. Amen. Sickness will not stop me. Amen. Say it for yourself. Sickness will. 
Sickness will not stop you in Jesus' name. You are healed by his stripes. Any sickness, small, great, any sickness, painful, terrible, wherever you are, here, inside, out there, in the overflow, online, anywhere, we're going to drive that sickness away from your body. Raise up that hand, raise up that hand and say it to the Lord quietly there, sickness, I reject you. You will not stay in my life. I will progress without you. I am healed. I am healed. Heaven has confirmed it. I am healed. I am, healed. I am delivered. I am healed. Praise the Lord. God, Christ, Holy Spirit, angels, heaven have said amen to your deliverance. Raise up that hand, raise up that hand, lay the other hand where the challenge is, Father, in the name of Jesus, the name that cannot fail. I bring every brother, every sister, every child, every boy, every girl, every lady, every gentleman. I bring everyone before you now. Lord, take that sickness away in Jesus' name. From the top of your head to the tip of your toe, you are healed in Jesus' name. Any demonic power there, any oppressive power there, any afflicting power there, come out in Jesus' name. Lord, give everyone power to tread on serpents and scorpions. And from today, no sickness will hurt them in Jesus' name. The Lord put testimony in your mouth. At the time of your exam, sickness will not stop you. At the time of your interview, sickness will not stop you. At the time of that new position, in that new place, as you are going higher and higher, sickness will not stop you. Lord, heal them now. And let that health continue. I thank you, Lord. Satan under their feet. Demons under their feet. Affliction under their feet. Confirm it for everyone in Jesus' name. Amen. Now we're going to pray the final prayer for the success awaiting you. It's in front of you. It's in front of you. I said it's in front of you. I told you about myself. Why did I talk about myself? I shouldn't accept that. I wanted you to know that everywhere I have been, you will be. And the success, more success than I have got. The Lord put it upon your life in Jesus' name. Success, success that will make you significant in life. Your name will not be written on the sand that the feet of men will rub on. Your name will be written in the book of who is who. You will become significant. Raise up that hand. I believe. I believe. I believe. I believe. Father, 
You are a God of progress, the God of profit, and the God of productivity. I pray for every brother, every sister. I pray for every man, every woman. I pray for every young sister, young brother. I pray for everyone inside here, outside there. I pray for all those online. Lord, virtually everyone. Yeah. It is not difficult for you to make a success of every life. And therefore, Lord, I pronounce heavenly success on every life in Jesus' name. Lord, take mediocrity away from everyone. Failure away from everyone. Defeat away from everyone. Lord, the God of power the God of all possibilities put success, significance in every life here today in Jesus' name. And everyone that will hear this message later, Lord, I pray the same success you give to every one of us here, grant unto them too. Victory in your life. Triumph in your life. Prosperity in your life. Joy and happiness in your life. Progress in your life. Solution to every problem in your life. Heaven's answer to all your prayers in Jesus' name. Your tears are wiped away. And whatever it is you need to get you to that success, heaven will provide it for you. Confirm the success, the significance, the victory, the triumph in every life in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name.